the gift from God, the gift of love, the gift of his son, given to us, for us. We have many times in our lives we hear that we have gifts and they're just for us. Not so long ago, a few years back, the wife and I received a gift. In the mail, it says, congratulations, you just got, was given this gift to the Bahamas for four days and three nights. We were excited. We got a gift. We'd never been there before. Just call this number. So we called the number and said, congratulations. You got the cruise, everything is all taken care of. All you need to do is find a way down here. Oh, we could handle that. And that's what we were told. So we went ahead and we settled, scheduled our trip. We went down there, get on the boat to find out they had a meeting and said, oh, the fine print is this. While you're here, you have to go and sit in at one of our resorts, our timeshare things, to see if you can purchase one. Now, I think if we knew that up front, we probably would not have went to this, but it still was a vacation. What a gift we had given to us. It was great. It was free. But guess what? It cost me time. Time. I took away from our vacation, but we did enjoy it. It was a good time. But the thing is that there was fine print, wasn't there? There was catches to this free gift. Something given to us for free, but it cost you. So we need to read the fine print. We need to ask questions up front. But when we start looking at it, that's the secular world we are living in. But in the spiritual world, through God, there is no fine print. There's no strings attached. It doesn't cost us anything. It's absolutely, totally free, and that's his love for us. Totally free, given to us. No strings attached, no fine print to read. Clearly given to us. He shows us that gift. He tells us about that gift of love. We find it when we read in the book of Romans, we talk about Abraham who, had, who was promised that he would be blessed. And he was promised that his family would be blessed and he would be the father of many nations. Did it cost him anything? No. It's because he had that faith in God. Then we go up further and then we start to listen, reading the letters from Paul and we find Paul said that's the same thing. We have been promised to be blessed not as many nations, father of many nations, but of having peace with God through Jesus Christ. A free gift. The peace of God through Jesus Christ. Wow. On top of that, Jesus gives us many more gifts. The gift of love, one. The gift of forgiveness, two. All kinds of them. Free gifts. Have you given something away freely lately? Have you loved someone not expecting to be loved in return? Kind of like our wedding vows, isn't it? You promise to love them through sickness and health. Riches. And poor, no matter what, you promise to love them unconditionally. Meaning you have to give up something, don't you? Sometimes you have to give up what you want to love conditionally, unconditionally. Did God? Yes, he gave up his son for us. Did Jesus? Yes, he gave up his life here on earth and a life of being sinless for us to take on our sins. They love us unconditionally. 
Do you love your children unconditionally? Do you love your parents unconditionally? Do you love your neighbors? Your friends? How about your enemies? There is no fine print in God's love. He loves us. He loves our parents, our children, our neighbors, our enemies. No strings attached, isn't there? So isn't that the greatest gift we ever can get? A gift of love. A gift for us. Freely. Freely. I, I look at it sometimes as a Christian. Many of people, including myself at one time, have done this before. That I made sure that my life as a Christian was the greatest it could possibly be. I made sure I dotted my I's, crossed my T's, said my prayers, gave my blessings, loved one another. And there was a time in my life I said, and God will bless me. Because he should. I've been good. God doesn't say that we have to be that way. He loves us no matter what. Hmm. So we should love somebody else no matter what. I work with youth that are troubled youth. And they, they're, they're parents and and. Social workers and case workers and parole officers ask me, how do you come? You can care so well for these kids. And I said, it's because I love them unconditionally as God loves me. And that love has a reward to it. Because they see that love, they feel that love, and they begin to share that love. And that's what we're asked to do through Jesus Christ. Is to share his love with other people as he shared it with us. No matter what. A good story I have on that is about a school teacher who was getting ready to sign up these two girls into, let's see, I think it was fourth grade. And the teacher says, okay, what's your birth date and how old are you? Well, the one girl said, well, we're sisters, we're both seven, and my birthday is on April 8th, and hers is on April 20th. And the teacher said, no, 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 that can't be. You're not twins, but you've got to be twins if you're the same age and born in the same month, so you, it can't be 12 days later. And the second girl goes, oh, oh, yes, it can. The teacher said, no. And she did, yes, it can, because one of us is adopted. Oh, the teacher said, oh, chuckling and seeing that. She asked the girls, then, which one of you were adopted? They looked at each other, and they said this together. We asked our parents that a little while back, which one of us was adopted. And they told us they loved us unconditionally. And that they don't remember which one of us were adopted. They love us the same. Wow. Isn't that unconditional love? Those two girls loved each other's sisters. Loved each other. Their parents loved them no matter what. Doesn't matter. They still loved them. That's how God's love works for us. He loves us no matter what. No matter the fact that I'm five foot two, eyes of blue, not six foot four, doesn't matter. He loves me. He loves me. He loves you the same way. It's a gift that is given to us for us. Sometimes in our lives we want to be in a hurry to get that gift, but guess what? We already have it. It's already there. We just have to have faith and belief and believe and know that God gave it to us. Know that God loves us. He does. He gave us Jesus Christ. And then we have to have patience because sometimes in our lives we don't get things when we expect it. We want it now. So God, I know I love you. I've been good and everything. I need this now. And God says no. 
He's not that he's hating us or wanting to punish us. It's just that God is saying we need to have patience. He will give it to those who are in need when they need it, not when they want it. A good example about this was a young man named Michael. He bought himself his first computer and he got it home and he was so curious about these computers that he tore it apart to see how this computer would work. Some 17 years later, he figured it out. And he went from a teen to a tycoon. Came the youngest man ever to have manufactured something to become in the fortune of 500 corporation. You guys know this man. Each and every one of you probably seen it, heard it, probably worked on him. His name is Michael Dell. He took 17 years to create a better computer, an easier computer to manufacture, user-friendly to give what people want. He had patience, didn't he? Can you imagine that patience if we have that same thing with God? What rewards will we get? It may not be a Fortune 500 company, but I think eternity in heaven kind of beats that, don't you? That really does beat it. What a gift that we have. The gift of love. The gift from God. The agape love. Who knows what agape means? It means that we love somebody spiritually just because we love them and see things in their lives. That person is worth value to us. Value to God. It's somebody that has value. God has value in us, doesn't he? Because he loves us unconditionally. Hmm. God gave something up for us, for his, our love for us. He gave his son. Hmm. He laid down his life for us that we may lay down, our, lay down our lives for others. Did God gain anything from that? By sending his son for us? Would you be willing to lay your son or daughter down, their life down for somebody, for love? That's a tough one, isn't it? But God did it. What love. What love he has for us. So have patience and wait. Even though we are a society that doesn't want to wait, we want it now. God says, have faith in me. I will do extraordinary things. I can make it happen. We just got to remember that God's love is free. It's not something that we earn. We already have it. As long as we continue to have that hope and belief in him, we will find out the words that Paul wrote. He said, may May the God of hope fill you with all the joy and all the peace in believing so that you may abound in the hope by the power of the Holy Spirit given to us freely. Along with knowing that God loves us so much through Jesus Christ who has saved us from sin through his love for us for he has risen for you and for me. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for that gift of love. We know it cost you a lot to give up your son for us. Jesus, thank you for be, from being sinless to taking on all our sins. That's the greatest love any, anybody can have, is to lay one's life down for each other. You gave us the greatest gift and let us in turn give you that gift back by loving you with all our hearts, our minds, our souls and by sharing your word with others throughout the world so that we all can unite and be one with you in eternity. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.